afternoon, everyone, and thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Laura. So, um, yeah, I run um, an agency, actually, Blossoms, which is not a dating website, which is an agency based in uh, Hong Kong and now New York. And we help Western brands take into account cultural differences uh, with China to adapt their branding and their communication. And uh, I remember talking at the first China Connect uh, eight years ago about exactly what uh, Jen was saying, the fact that many brands had difficulties to, to take into account these uh, Chinese specificities and, um, and didn't localize enough their, their communication, which, which grew a certain distance between these brands and their, and their audience. And what we can observe right now is that most big brands localize a lot uh, their communication. They have localized uh, content for, uh, for WeChat, they, uh, they use local ambassadors, they use local KOL. Uh, but sometimes I think the risk right now is more to, um, to dilute uh, their brand's uh, identity through sometimes blind uh, localization strategies. So the red thread of my presentation will be how to find the right distance with the, the Chinese audience. And I will show you three examples. <coughs> so the first example is about um, communications based on the virtual boyfriend experience. Um, we see that a lot in the beauty industry. That's the trend since last year of to use male celebrities advertising for women's products. So I'm going to show uh, you the three uh, videos. This one is the way it's our perfume product. Uh, in China. 
Uh, and they also attract, uh, it's interesting to notice that they, um, they, they have a fan, a fan base made of very young women in their 20s as well as mothers in their 30s uh, or, or even more. So this is a, a, the main aspiration of writers. The second one is more psychological because you see a whole typology of different boyfriends, who, ideal boyfriends, which uh, stand for different conceptions, uh, popular conceptions of ideal love in China. So um, with the, the first one, the hot date, which is maybe the, less, the, main, the least the mainstream uh, boyfriend idea in China, but still, uh, it appeals to, um, to the guy that you would spot uh, in, a, in a nightclub. It's the, the typical uh, um, ideal fantasized boyfriend that would appeal to a very young audience, which is the audience of the, of the wrong. The second one, more, much more mainstream, is the, the romantic boyfriend who's taking his girlfriend to Paris, driving her in his convertible car. Uh, Etc. And knowing that romance uh, in China remains a huge, uh, a huge driver, as national drivers, because uh, there's definitely a lack of romance, which is still not totally rooted in Chinese culture today. And the last one, the most mainstream um, ideal boyfriend, is actually the, the future husband, like the caring, the caring boyfriend who's taking care of his little princess, uh, uh, bringing her food, uh, and very protective. And this echoes to the popular, the sweet, innocent love, which is a, a form of love promoted notably by um, Korean drama in China. And then we have more classic uh, statutory writers, especially the, the YSL uh, videos, so the prestigious image of Paris, we know the cliché, this ad, the Eiffel Tower, the same river, etc. And the luxury lifestyle, the Porsche, the luxury Another aspirational driver uh, is the reversal of gender roles because for once, men are pictured as objects of desires, which is a kind of a change, uh, especially the, in the Maybelline ad. And the men, the representation of masculinity is quite interesting because they use what we call uh, in China the little fresh meat uh, boys. So <laughs> boys who are considered as more, uh, even more beautiful than women, they are very uh, young, like in their 20s. They have the perfect, perfect skin, flawless skin, perfect face features, and with this dichotomy between a baby face, uh, everybody this popular that I was mentioning, and a very muscular uh, of body. And they lack, we could say they lack personality, so every woman, woman can project the ideal uh, boyfriend uh, within them. And with the dichotomy between the sweet boys, and, uh, which is the majority, like the hands on the and, uh, and the bad boys. So this is very aspirational. Uh, and as we can see, it's a huge trend right now in, uh, since last year in China, in, in the beauty uh, industry, so many men. We could wonder why L'Oréal would, uh, would choose a, a man to advertise for an anti aging product. And actually, it's because all these ads usually stage the man as offering a gift to, uh, to his little princess. And this, uh, this little princess ring is really uh, very rooted in, in, in China. Uh, with women, uh, and Chinese women expecting the, the, their boyfriend to, uh, to treat them, to pay for everything, to carry their bag, uh, to, to uh, comfort them when they feel uh, upset, etc. So this really resonates. This is very aspirational for Chinese women. Uh, so this is what I show you is the dream, but how to make the dream relatable and accessible? It's through identification drivers. So uh, we can see that through the, um, the way uh, these videos are shot, uh, through a point of view, uh, point of view shooting, so which gives the, uh, the idea that the viewer uh, becomes the, the, the main actress. So that actually the woman in the movie, we, we hardly see the woman, we hardly hear the woman, she's really absent uh, in, the, in the video, we just see uh, her hands, uh, which, um, and we see a lot of actually physical, uh, physical interactions, eye, direct eye contact, and hand holding, which really um, favors uh, identification from the viewer. And this resonates with the popularity of uh, virtual reality. Uh, I want to show you an example of uh, a Korean example, actually, of uh, it is free. Because all this kind of male celebrities comes from Korea. So here, uh, they, they have a fan uh, interact with Lee Ho, which is a great, great uh, K pop star. And then we will have a fake date, a virtual date, and we'll have a date to end it. So let's go.
같이 가고 싶은 데가 있어요. And this, uh, this uh, also virtual, this kind of virtual experience in advertising also resonates with um, the popularity of real TV shows in China, uh, super popular, uh, including inviting celebrities. So you have two, ca two categories actually. You know, you have the celebrities getting interfering with uh, anonymous, normal people's lives and uh, uh, creating uh, match matching couples, etc. Or you have the camera entering uh, celebrities' private home and these celebrities. Uh, sharing, uh, confessing their whole lives, their ups and downs. And here we have a, a, a celebrity, a Chinese celebrity, uh, falling apart because she's talking about uh, her career and they invite the dad to criticize her life choice. So they really talk about very um, personal topics that uh, really uh, matter to Chinese people, and this is how they raise emotion. So this is also the major source of inspiration. And beyond the, the, this virtual experience, we had actually a, a reversal uh, of the star status, and I think this is the key success driver for these ads because the fan, the, the, I mean, the, the idol becomes the fan of the girlfriend, which is actually the viewer. Um, so you see, for instance, that um, so she can be um, she becomes the heroine as uh, either passively or actively, like she becomes the. the main major object of attention, like she's working, she's a busy lady working behind her computer and the boyfriend <coughs> trying to please her and comfort her. Um, interestingly, also in the, in the YSL ad, we see that the star is actually filming the girlfriend, so total reversal um, of, of roles. And in the middle line example, the woman becomes the actor. Like she's the one who spots the hot guy. She's the one going, chasing him, almost uh, harassing him uh, sexually uh, outside of the nightclub. So she's in, she's in control. Uh, and beyond that, we have a, a sort of desacralization of the idol. As I said before, the little touching, they touch hands <laughs> as if they were touching uh, Jesus. And also, the, the celebrities are pictured as real people and not uh, on their inaccessible uh, pedestal. And this also reflects uh, a major trend in communication beyond, uh, beyond videos to get closer to celebrities and desacralize celebrities. We can see that through print advertisements. I chose the example of, uh, of Ty Lawyer, um, which is about representing a celebrity as a celebrity, as a real person, in a realistic context. So here we can see uh, the fans uh, taking his pictures of his icons, the fans are, the fans are within the picture. Uh, and it could actually be a fast picture uh, posted on social media. It's not anymore uh, uh, about picturing someone from another inaccessible world. We also have a lot of um, videos uh, showcasing celebrities confessing themselves, like dropping off their masks and talking about uh, the ups and downs of their life, their career, their real self, their authentic self. This is, a, this is huge uh, in terms of communication, notably in the luxury industry. Uh, we have also celebrity events here. This is the, the famous example of Germain uh, with Yang Yang. So he had a lipstick made, uh, named after him. Um, so there was a campaign, and then they invited him to actually put makeup on, uh, on his fans. And we, many people talked about it, but live streaming, where uh, fans can uh, interact, send virtual gifts, virtual flowers to their audience, interact, ask questions, being answered. So, um, the conclusion uh, of the previous example is that we, could, we talked a lot about the lack of trust and the, 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 the lower uh, return on investment uh, about KOL. And I think this was an interesting example to show how brands can still um, use celebrities and celebrity KOL, but uh, about the importance of having them um, embody and voice authenticity. The second example is about Gucci. Um, Gucci's WeChat is really popular still today among uh, a lot of, uh, of Chinese audience and many, uh, many competitors around to try to copy the unique style of Gucci. So I want to show how Gucci manages to uh, create such an engaging content, an interactive content, knowing that I think the Gucci WeChat content is really unique because the, the content of Gucci WeChat is 
super cultural. It's all about culture, uh, it's even intellectual. Uh, uh, they talk about art from the late 17th century, so they don't sacrifice the quality of the content. Uh, but at the same time, they really manage to engage with the audience. So how do they do that? It's through the process of uh, what I call cultural metabolization, which is that they show, they translate a Western um, content, quality content, but they, they showcase it through uh, a Chinese lens. And they use for that uh, different types of mediations, so real people, uh, intercultural comparison, and educational content. And another specificity is that it's far from all these very commercial uh, uh, Wechat content. They hardly ever talk about Gucci's products directly, always through the mediation of, um, they would rather talk about the inspirations on, the, on connections. So again, about, it's not about culture. Uh, so the first, um, the first uh, mediations through real people, so usually celebrities, but they still and use actually more and more celebrities, ambassadors of or KOL. And the key uh, of the engagement is that they use local celebrities. So local celebrities means uh, outstanding numbers of fans <laughs> and, uh, uh, and awareness. They speak in Chinese, which is also a way for Chinese to relate better to what they say. These people try to have um, a personal perspective uh, and they talk at the first person, very usually, which is a way to uh, uh, personalize the, the narration. And they use also a lot of personal pictures. Not only, but I think this also uh, that makes a difference. I don't know if we can click on the Gucci on the chat um, on the right here. It's uh, Nini, that's the famous uh, actress Nini, uh, which is um, telling me about her trip to, uh, to, to Italy, and she's writing this post as a, as a personal diary, and she includes her own pictures. Um, and they also use uh, another category of mediators. I think many brands now do that, but they were the sort of pioneer about that. Like, for instance, here they invited four CEOs to talk about how to dress, to express your personality through your, through your outfit when you, when you go to work. Um, a second um, mediator is about culturally transposed content. So, here, for instance, they talk about. Uh, they present a uh, winter collection, Gucci collection for men, and they draw, they, they hire a historian, a historian to draw a comparison between this style and the dandy, the style of the Chinese dandies in Shanghai uh, in the early 1920s. So I think this is quite, uh, this is quite daring, but they, they, they really uh, manage to engage the audience because they don't compare it with something aloof from their culture, but they talk about, uh, they talk about Chinese culture and how uh, at the time, uh, men uh, were, uh, were able to wear jewelry and accessories and, and, and Another example is this uh, uh, exhibition, Eternity, by a Chinese artist, which is interesting. It mixes uh, Greek gods' uh, bodies with the Buddha's head. And this was the opportunity to, to talk about, to raise a dialogue between Chinese and Western spirituality and, and art. And the last example is about, uh, they talk a lot about their design, design inspirations. This was for the Tian collection of Gucci, and they, which was inspired by the Chinese traditional uh, bird and flowers uh, paintings. And it's really unique to show, to pay tribute to uh, Chinese inspiration and to show it's part of their creativity when we see so many brands more condescending about China. Uh, last one is educational content. So they do a lot of uh, cultural decoding and, and actually, um, so for instance here uh, on the left they explain uh, the, the, there's a wolf on the, on the design of the, the design of the belt, so they, they would explain the Western symbol. And, um, and I think Chinese, uh, it really creates added value for, the, for, for Chinese audience who like storytelling about the products they can share. Um, and they are also very much attracted by the beautiful design. And overall, the voice of Gucci, uh, the, the, the fact that they managed to build this um, hybrid voice, uh, I think they were also pioneers to do that, to have this very high level, uh, sometimes even academic, referenced language, uh, quite elitist, but to mix it with uh, internet slang and very accessible words, everyone, uh, and expressions everyone would relate to. So they really crafted a, an original cocktail of uh, expressions and, and words which create a unique language. And now I think many brands are following uh, this path. 
Huh? And my last example is an uh, example of KOL because we've been criticizing a lot of uh, KOLs knowing that their, uh, yeah, their efficiency may be less and less um, high. So Becky Lee, uh, it's interesting, as you know, she's uh, one of the top uh, fashion uh, bloggers uh, in China uh, with millions of followers. What's interesting, and I think a key driver for her success is the power of transformation. So she herself, she embodies uh, this transformation. She's at the same time accessible because she, uh, she used to be, uh, she's a former uh, uh, little journalist uh, in Guangzhou, and she became, in a few years, the uh, top uh, fashion blogger traveling on the international cities and living in a dream, uh, in a dream house, etc. So, so she's the living embodiment uh, that the, this uh, transformation is possible. And this, uh, this kind of personal storytelling relies on the, the Cinderella the Cinderella effect, which is also very much conveyed by uh, K-drama. We always have this like, motif of the, the little girl who's going to transform uh, socially, uh, physically, and psychologically, because she's going to become more self-confident, more sophisticated, and therefore climb up the social ladder. So this is a huge uh, identification and aspirational driver in China. So thanks to this, her personality uh, itself, she managed to build a whole sisterhood of, uh, of women. She has a quite a wide, uh, uh, quite a wide audience of, uh, uh, of fans who follow her and who also interact with her a lot, like sending their own a lot of user-generated content. They, uh, they send their own pictures of transformation when they cut their hair or when they buy a new outfit to show uh, the before and after effects. Uh, which is the best advertisement. And her whole content, whatever she talks about, beauty, fashion, or lifestyle, all this is seen and, and tackled through the lens of transformation, which makes it very relatable. Uh, and the voice, uh, always pay attention to the voice and, and, and how, how, how these people uh, really uh, create and write content. Um, I think the secret is that it's very it's authentic. And why is it authentic? Because it's personal. Like she would share a lot of private anecdotes. She talks a lot about her family, for instance, but she would use cartoon, of course, to respect the privacy. So a lot of humor, but she would talk how her mother uh, uh, criticizes the fact that she doesn't have time to uh, take care of the house, uh, keeping in her apartment, so this is why she doesn't get a husband. So, so uh, but this is quite personal. Uh, her tone is also very, uh, very encouraging and, and friendly. She always uh, uh, says, you can do it, this can be your house too, etc. And, and trust. She raises trust because the content, it's like from Gucci, huh? it's a very solid, consistent content. Very long posts, lots of words. So it's not only about videos that people can engage with the Chinese audience. Uh, long posts, but very reference. She would mix uh, other, other uh, magazines or bloggers' advice, plus adding her own uh, comments, uh, lots of comparisons, etc. Uh, second way to, uh, to build trust is that she makes it real, once again. She, uh, she stated it's all about sharing her experience of the products instead of just uh, um, ad advertising or presenting products. Like, this is a very famous example when she sold uh, 100 or uh, 1,000 coupons in five minutes. Uh, so uh, she shows pictures of herself going to work or having a coffee break, and she would share the experience, how does it feel to be alone in her car and, and uh, have quite philosophical thoughts. Um, and, and she also uses a lot of the soft illusion, like here she would make fun of the fact that she's quite small, so what to wear with her, and it's like her hobbies. Well, so my conclusion, uh, I try to make this as fast as possible. My conclusion is that to, to, to bridge this distance, I think the right distance uh, with the Chinese audience is to make it real. I think there are three major ways to make it real, is to collaborate with celebrities, but celebrities who are relatable and uh, authentic. Uh, the second one is to create quality uh, inter intercultural content and to draw these comparisons between Western and Chinese culture. And the third one is to come up with innovative but interactive formats. Thank you.